never knew how to tell you. I would tell be able what? to talk about my Can life. You what I, I, I ever loved a lot. I have a two yeah. arms. You want me to say it out loud? Dear Alan, I stopped off here to have my piles out. Wouldn't do to go back among the Indians with piles, I figured. Bill Gaines was in town and he has burned down the Republic of Panama from Las Palmas to David on Perigoric. I was getting off the junk and he kept nagging me. Why was I kidding myself? Once a junkie, always a junkie. If I quit junk, I would become a sloppy lush or go crazy taking cocaine. One night I got lushed and bought some paragoric, and he kept saying over and over, I, I knew you'd bring home the paragoric. I just knew it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be a junkie the rest of your life. And looking at me with his little cat smile, junk is a cause with him. I checked in the hospital, junk sick, and spent four days there. They would only give me three shots of morphine, and I couldn't sleep from pain and heat and deprivation. I recall walking by some American women in the corridor who looked like officers' wives. One of them was saying, I don't know why, but I just can't eat sweets anymore. You got diabetes, lady, I said. They all whirled around and gave me an outraged stare. After checking out of the hospital, I stopped again to buy two ounces of paragoric. Same old Panama, whores and pimps and hustlers. What nice girl? Naked lady dance. See me fuck my sister. No wonder food prices are high. They can't keep them down on the farm. They all want to come in the big city and be pimps. I had a magazine article with me describing a joint outside Panama City called the Blue Goose. This is anything goes joint. Homosexuals run riot. I remembered a prohibition era roadhouse of my adolescence and the taste of gin rickies in a Midwest summer. Oh my God. And the August moon and a violet sky and Billy Brad Shinkle's cock. How sloppy can you get? Immediately, two old whores sat down at my table without being asked and orders drinks. The bill for one round was $6.90. I may add that far from running riot in Panama, I never scored for one boy there. I wonder what a Panamanian boy would be like. Probably cut. I ran into my old friend Jones, the cab driver, and bought some C off him that was cut to hell and back. I nearly suffocated myself trying to sniff enough of this crap to get a lift. That's Panama. Wouldn't surprise me if they cut the whores with sponge rubber. The Panamanians are about the crummiest people in the hemisphere. I understand the Venezuelans offer competition, but have never encountered any group of citizens. That brings me down like the Canal Zone Civil Service. You cannot contact a civil servant on the level of intuition and empathy. He just does not have a receiving set, and he gives out like a dead battery. 
The only element in Panama I contact are the hip spades, and they are all on the hustle. Love, Bill. Yes, Billy Bradshinkle got to be such a nuisance, I finally had to kill him. The first time was in my Model A after the spring prom. Billy with his pants down to his ankles and his tuxedo shirt still on, and jism all over the car seat. Later, I was holding his arm while he vomited in the car headlights, looking young and petulant with his hair must, standing there in the warm spring wind. Then we got back in the car and turned the lights off, and I said, let's again. And he said, no, we shouldn't. And I said, why not? And by then, he was excited too, so we did it again. And I ran my hands over his back under his tuxedo shirt and held him against me and felt the long baby hairs of his smooth cheek against mine. And he went to sleep there and it was getting light when we drove home. After that, in the car several times. And one time his family was away and we took off all our clothes. And afterwards, I watched him sleeping like a baby with his mouth a little open. That summer, Billy caught typhoid, and I went to see him every day, and his mother gave me lemonade. When Billy was better, we used to drive out to Crev Coeur Lake and rent a boat and go fishing and lie on the bottom of the boat with our arms around each other's shoulders, not doing anything. One Saturday, we explored an old quarry and found a cave and took our pants off in the musty darkness. I remember the last time I saw Billy was in October of that year, one of those sparkling blue days you get in the Ozarks. We had driven out into the country to hunt squirrels with my 22 single shot and walked through the woods without seeing anything to shoot at, and Billy was silent and sullen, and we sat on a log, and Billy looked at his shoes and finally told me he couldn't see me again. Notice I am sparing you the falling leaves. But why, Billy? Why? Well, if you don't know, I can't explain it to you. Let's go back to the car. We drove back in silence, and when we came to his house, he opened the door and got out. He looked at me for a second as if he was going to say something, then turned abruptly and walked up the flagstone path to his house. I sat there for a minute, looking at the closed door, then I drove home feeling numb. When the car was stopped in the garage, I put my head down on the wheel, sobbing and rubbing my cheek against the steel spokes. Finally, Mother called to me from an upstairs window, Was anything wrong? And why didn't I come in the house? So I wiped the tears off my face and went in and said I was sick and went upstairs to bed. Mother brought me a bowl of milk toast on a tray, but I couldn't eat any and cried all night. After that, I called Billy several times on the phone, but he always hung up when he heard my voice. And I wrote him a long letter which he never answered. Three months later, when I read in the paper he had been killed in a car wreck, and Mother said, Oh, that's the Bradshinkle boy. You used to be such good friends, didn't you? I said, Yes, Mother. Not feeling anything at all. Another bit of reminiscence, but genuine. Every Sunday at lunch, my grandmother would disinter her dead brother killed 50 years ago when he dragged his shotgun through a fence and blew his lungs out. Always remember my brother. He was such a lovely boy. I hate to see boys with guns. So every Sunday at lunch, there was the boy, 
lying by the wood fence and blood on the frozen red Georgia clay seeping into the winter stubble and poor old Mrs. Collins waiting for the cataracts to ripen so they can operate on her eye. And I got a silo full of queer corn. Where that come from? Another routine. A man who manufactures memories to order. Any kind you want and he guarantees you'll believe they happen just that way. As a matter of fact, I have just about sold myself Billy Branch. A line from the Japanese Sandman provides theme song of story. Just an old second-hand man trading new dreams for old. Oh, what the hell. Give it to Truman Capote.